Hey hey everyone, Carlo Pix here, and today I thought I would do the first in a series of diamond painting framing videos. So yes, what you see here is a bit strange, <laughs> but that's because I have provided a few options on one piece here. So um, at the end of the video, stay tuned, I will kind of narrow it down so you can get a better view like I'll you know move it in and out of the frame so you can get a better view of what these different options would look like as a whole but yeah um stay tuned you know don't click out of there just yet because it looks so funky but yeah here we go I wanted to go through uh the materials that I used for this uh you are going to need your diamond painting of course I because I will be doing uh, a few different framing possibilities for you guys. I will be experimenting with my very first diamond painting, which is this waterfall. Um, yeah, this is what got me hooked. But anyway, it's, it's a good size for me to play with and also good for you guys to see on uh, camera what can be done. Uh, so besides that, you need a cutting board mat of some sort. Um, for cutting, you will need... I, I'm using... A box cutter. I am using a ruler. Uh, actually, I have two rulers because I need to draw some long lines and some short lines, and it's just easier for me to manipulate that way. Um, you'll need scissors, of course, glue. Uh, for this uh, experiment, I'll be showing you two ways. One is with washi tape, although this isn't actually washi tape, it's decorative tape. But yes, you can use washi tape. Uh, my other option will include adhesive fabric. And this adhesive fabric, it's probably a little too busy for um, an accent of a diamond painting. Maybe not. It does, it does depend on the image that you've done. But I got this adhesive fabric at Daiso for $2.80. So it was really cheap. So I got that. Also at Daiso, I got this eye hook set, um, and it, this is to help you to be able to hang your picture afterwards. So this step, I guess, is optional depending on what you want to do. But basically, they're just little screws with eyes, so that you we can string some string <laughs> between them, so that you can hang it on the wall. I also got this at Daiso for two dollars and eighty cents. If you don't want to use the eye hooks, um, you can get some really, I don't know if you can see this. Actually, let me take one out of the bag. You can get some really tiny screws and then wrap um, some twine around that if you want to. Either way, I think it'll work. So you've got that. Um, when you're finishing your diamond painting, I recommend that you spray a varnish on it or apply some sort of protective coating because the way I'll be doing the framing, there will, will be no glass. It won't be behind glass. So you need something to protect your diamonds um, from dirt, dust and everything. So I use this. It's a spray varnish. Very easy to use. And you can probably find it at an art supply store. But I definitely recommend some sort of protective coating. Uh, and I am using yarn for this tutorial, but you'll probably want some sort of twine or some better, stronger rope. And this is for hanging afterwards. And then the big chunk, the backing that I'll be using is, oops, foam board. And this was very cheap. Um, it, of course, it just depends on where you can purchase it. I suggest shopping around, but you can get this really cheap. This huge piece, uh, which is 50 by 77 centimeters uh, cost me $8. So I can use this for um, more than one diamond painting, depending on the size of your diamond painting, of course, but still a bit cheaper than a frame for me. So yeah, um, let's get started. I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. Okay, so one of the first options I wanted to show you with this one was how it would look if you did a border versus no border. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the extra bits of canvas for both ways here. So the version with a border, I measured out one centimeter on each side and then cut along, gave it a one centimeter edge basically. So then I just go ahead and cut along that one centimeter edge that I've drawn out. For the option with no border, I just cut um, along the edge of the diamond painting itself, just where the diamonds start. Here, I would definitely suggest being very, very careful, especially if your edges aren't straight, like the diamonds are hanging off a little bit. You can accidentally knock some off like I did. <laughs> so yeah, so just be very careful when you're cutting along the edge there. So now I am using my final size of the diamond painting to trace out onto the signboard. So yeah, I said f that I use I was using foam board as one of my materials. However, I didn't have enough foam board for this project, but I had signboard, so I'm using signboard. And I'm just tracing the edges of my diamond painting so I know exactly what size to cut it to. And I just cut along the edge, cut out the size that I had marked. Just, uh, you know, be very careful. <laughs> Um, I think foam board is a bit easier to cut than sign board, but yeah, you'll have to make several passes with the knife, at least I did, to get mine to cut out. You can tell that I didn't make my cuts 100% straight. I had a little bit of issue with everything sliding around, but um, don't worry, get it as straight as you can because we will be covering the edges. So now you need to cut out another piece exactly the same size. I got lucky with this size of signboard. Um, it was exact exactly the right width, so I just needed to make one more cut. So. Very easy, very convenient. Okay, so now that you've got two pieces of foam board or sign board that are exactly the same size, we just need to actually glue them together. Just make sure they're as even as possible and I would definitely suggest letting it dry um, for a little bit before you continue working on it. But for demonstration purposes, I let it dry for about five minutes. <laughs> So 
so while it was drying, um, I measured out exactly how wide my piece was so I could find the middle point. And once I marked the middle point, I marked, I think my middle point was 17 centimeters. So then I marked uh, seven centimeters on either side. Just made a mark towards the upper side of the board, the top end. <laughs> And then once I marked those bits, those areas, I took the box cutter and just made small X's. And this is for the eye hooks so that they are a bit easier to get started because you'll be screwing those in. So just really cutting slight X's into there. So next for the uh, borders or sorry the borderless edges um, I went ahead and put down the tape first as well as the um, fabric and I was trying to show how to do um, a kind of a V corner so that it looks a bit more finished, but this tape just wasn't having it. So I show you a little bit better uh, with the adhesive fabric that's a bit easier to work with. But yes, just cutting on the angle, it's really <laughs> easy if your materials will behave and work for you. But yeah, as far as the tape goes, you're just basically covering the edges of your uh, foam board. So with the adhesive fabric, I just um, cut off some of the um, big piece that it came with, came in. And I wanted to just have like, the width of the ruler was a very good um, size to work with. So I flipped it over to the backing side and just kind of, you know, made a line and then cut along that line and there's my piece to work with on this edge. I just marked where the corner was and kind of where the end would be just so I could see the complete angle and then I just snipped it off like that It is good if you can do it in one snip that way you can rest assured that the angle will be a bit more even But yeah, that's just how you do that V corner a mitered corner So then just like the tape, I've just um, kind of stretch and pull at the same time as I'm laying it across the back. And that gives you a bit more of a taut finished look. Um, this fabric was a bit, not difficult, but a bit different to work with because it was stretchy. So I found that I was pulling it a bit oddly, but um, still, what you see, like the oddness, you can only see, um, well, you won't be able to see it at all because the oddness is covered by the canvas, so good enough. So that's it. I've got two sides done. This is the borderless edges. And now to work on um, the bordered edges. So what you need to do here, and I didn't do it, but you need to glue your canvas to the foam board. What I'm using instead is, um, it's called blue tack and it's like poster tack or putty, just like re a reusable putty that you can use. Um, this is because I'll be using this for other framing possibilities. I didn't want to permanently attach it to the foam board, but you definitely should. <laughs> so use glue. Wait for it to dry before continuing. So now I'm taking the tape and doing the exact same thing um, that I was doing before I put the canvas down. 
except this time I'm gonna cover that border that I left. So here you just be careful that you're putting the tape down in a straight edge. Another thing that I noticed um, is make sure that if you're gonna use tape, get a tape that is opaque enough to cover any writing left on the canvas. <laughs> you can still see part of the legend on here, but you know, hopefully that's okay for demonstration purposes. Forgive me. So then yeah, you'll just flip it over and then do the same thing. So pull up as you're flipping the tape over the back. Just make sure you pull it taut. One edge done, let's move on to the adhesive fabric edge. In my opinion, it was the easiest medium to work with. Too bad that it was too short to fit the length all in one piece, so I had to cut two pieces. Again, demonstration only. <laughs> Make sure that your fabric um, is the longest length. <laughs> Unless you're using a solid color, then it might be a little bit easier to match it. So just struggling with that adhesive backing again, and then doing the same as the tape on the border edge, just making sure that I line up the edge with the diamonds as close as possible, and making sure that the canvas um, is covered, especially in the writing. Since this fabric is a little stretchy, uh, you can see some of the writing on the canvas here. So maybe even if you don't have uh, tape or fabric that's opaque enough, you can always paint it white before you get started on that. If you're going the way of the border, just paint the remaining canvas white and I believe that should alleviate your problem. I'm sure there were better ways to do this um, second bit, but like, you know, you could have lined up the pattern or stuff like that, but yeah, this is just a demonstration. So I wasn't going to go that fancy. And I don't think there was any lining up anything on this one. <laughs> and if you were doing the borders all the same, you know, <laughs> unlike what I'm doing here, you can just tuck the fabric in really. I'm just gonna cut it off. So now that uh, the framing is pretty much complete. I'm just going to add in the eye hooks uh, so that we do have something to hang it by. And again, you could have used those tiny screws I showed at the start. Um, I'm just going to use these eye hooks. They were cheap. And I think those screws <laughs> belong to something else. Uh, but yeah, just using that. Cutting a bit of yarn. Um, yeah. I do recommend using something a bit stronger. Uh, but Again, just for demonstration sake. And I'm sure there's better ways to tie knots uh, for these eye hooks, but just going with what I know. <laughs> Leave a little bit of slack in between the two eye hooks, double knot, and cut the excess and you're done.
All right, so here we are. Here's the final result. Yeah, it looks a bit funky because I have too many weird colors and borders and no borders happening here. So what I'll do is I'll just move this around in the frame to give you sort of a better idea of what it would look like as a whole, as I mentioned at the start. So I'm just going to move this down and over. Or maybe like how should I? Oh, I did pick two corners. Anyways, we'll start with the top here. Ah, there goes my camera. So yeah, I chose, basically this edge has no border and I chose to use a tape here because using the foam board and I'm actually using signboard, the edges just looks not so professional, if that helps. Uh, so I just thought covering the edges will give it a bit more of a finished look. So covering this edge, so that's what it would look like. Covering this edge with tape and then covering this edge with adhesive fabric. That was very fun to use, actually. It was very good. Um, but yeah, that's what that kind of looks like. So it gives you kind of a clean edge here, like, you know, a no frame painting. Now down here, I did the border. And as you can see, I used the fabric down here and then the tape on the sides. And I also wanted to try and show you how easy it was to do the, um, the edging like the diagonal edging it's not too hard you just it's a bit fiddly depending on your medium but if you're using this tape or this uh, fabric you just need to make your markings and then cut it that's all you need to do but have a little bit of patience with it <laughs> but yeah here's let me try and hide that so that's how that looks um with the flowers it doesn't exactly go so you know you do need to pick your fabrics you know differently or maybe you like this up to you it's all your choice there all your design and let me show you how it looks yeah there, that's a bit better so that's kind of what it would look like with this border it looks a little bit nicer but this looks a little too for me it looks a little too playful for this you know relaxing seams but you know <laughs> to each his own that choice is up to you the design pattern but some people like it with a border some people like it without the border, but either way, it does, um, I guess it's a little hard to show you, I think. It's a little hard to see, but it does cover the sides here, so that way it still covers that really ugly edge of the foam board. So yeah. And then the back, which you saw, I just made, you know, so that you can hang it. That's up to you. So that is the finished product. I really do hope that you have enjoyed. Please leave any kind of comments, questions or anything below. I know this is just one style that I have um, out of a few suggestions. Um, so yeah, you don't have to like this. This isn't the end all be all. Everyone has suggestions on how to frame it without spending, you know, a lot of money on a frame itself. So I'm trying to think of what I can do to minimize the cost of framing, but still have it look kind of nice. I think with the border, it would be very nice. And it's very cheap to get these. So yeah, that's it. I hope this was helpful. Looking forward to your comments. And yeah, I'll also see you in the next video. Bye.